This is a short sermon for Sunday the 20th of December and also at the end, the answers to the Advent Hymns quiz. Let's start with the tune of a hymn and uh, we've got a, a good one to sing on this day, the fourth Sunday of Advent. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. This is the Sunday we give thanks for Mary and her impressive trust in the Lord when she was brought a message from God. We're going to hear about that uh, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 26. In the sixth month, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at the words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child. And give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. So we see that Mary had plans. Plans to be married to Joseph. The betrothal was agreed between the families. And Mary was quietly getting ready for marriage. When she received a messenger with this message which threatened to blow her plans out of the water. And this year, many of us have had plans wrecked. Big plans, small plans, definite plans or vague plans. Most of it has needed alteration, sometimes drastic alteration. It's hard to cope with, but it's made more bearable if we know that there is a big plan, that God has a big plan for humankind. It's okay to be disturbed, and Mary was disturbed by this message from God through his messenger, and she naturally wondered what was going on and asked a question. We see that. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. And then went on to describe how she was going to have a baby who would be God's forever king for everyone. And then she asked, How will this be since I am a virgin? Now it's right to ask questions. Mary knew she was a virgin. She was saving herself for marriage to her husband. And so how on earth was she going to give birth to a baby? 
Well, it's good to an ask questions, it's good to answer questions, and the messenger answered. And he didn't say, oh, don't ask difficult questions. No, no. He said, by God's power, this astonishing thing will happen, because your child will be the Son of God. And since it always helps us to have others to talk to about astonishing things, the messenger says, you can talk to your auntie Elizabeth. She knows too that God is doing something astonishing. Even Elizabeth, your relative, verse 36, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. It's okay to be disturbed. It's okay to answer questions. Questions need answering and God's messenger provided good answers. And so it is that Mary is given two valuable helps. One, someone else who understands to talk with, Elizabeth. And, secondly, just the sniff of a realisation that she is a small part of a very big plan. She doesn't know the whole plan, but God has given Elizabeth a baby six months before her, and then her child will follow on to be part of God's big plan for the world. So Mary's plans are blown apart. Her expectations drastically altered. But she can see that God's big plan is working out through all the upheavals of her family and the nations. And that enables her to say this, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. She knows her place within, uh, with the living Lord God and she trusts the Lord. That's why Mary is so impressive and inspiring for us. And so, we reflect on plans being messed up. Her plans are messed up, but she knows there is God's big plan. The leaders in Mary's world are unimpressive, but God is providing a king who is the right sort of king to be in charge forever and ever. And so she trusts the Lord. Even though she will have some impossible explaining to do to her fiancé, she trusts the Lord. Even though her life has just got much more difficult, she trusts the Lord. That's the right thing to do, isn't it? We know God's plan through Jesus much better than Mary did. And however our life has got more difficult, we can trust the Lord. We're going to hear the tune of another hymn, the great Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <laughs> Final prayer. The Lord bless you and keep you, and may his face shine upon you now and always. Amen. And before we end, now the answers to the Advent Hymns quiz. We put this up a 
quite soon after Advent Sunday, so it's been there nearly three weeks, and I know lots of people have had a look at it, and maybe lots of you have done it as well. Here are the answers, if you're interested. There were nine hymn tunes, and here are the answers. One was, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. I think I described it as a classic Advent hymn, like number two. Hark the glad sound, the Saviour comes. Number three is a more recent one associated with this time of year uh, by Graham Kendrick in the late 20th century, like, like a candle flame. And then number four, the Wesley classic, Lo, he comes with clouds descending. Number five, very old one, probably 14th century or earlier, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, that's the one we just heard. Then number six, on Jordan's bank the Baptist's cry announces that the Lord is nigh. That's uh, the one that we often do on the third Sunday of Advent, remembering John the Baptist. Not to be confused with Ride on, Ride on in Majesty, which we sing on Palm Sunday. So on Jordan's bank is the answer you wanted for number six. Number seven is Tell Out My Soul, the one we had earlier, Mary's Song. Most suitable for Advent 4, this Sunday, but sung all the year round, I think. And then number eight, Light of the World, You Step Down into Darkness. That was the other one of the newer ones. And finally, number nine, Thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown. I hope you enjoyed the quiz, but more than that, I hope you enjoy singing these great Advent hymns and praising the Lord.